Welcome to Studio Lego String Solution. My name is Bharat Sharma, and today we talk about the metal melting. So there are many types of furnaces used to melt and uh, hold metal. Some furnaces uh, uh, batch melt while other melt continuously. Important factor in selecting the appropriate melting and holding furnace include daily production requirement, available energy sources like gas or electricity, electricity, furnace efficiency, and the uh, you know the propensity of the furnace design to from slug or dross. The type of refractory used to line the furnace is equally important and can improve furnace efficiency as well as casting quality. So this video will going to uh, help you in many ways. After this uh, uh, video, uh, you can identify the type of furnace used to melt and uh, holding aluminium. And you also can able to identify the key factor in choosing the appropriate furnace and you also able to state the most desirable type of refractory for melting and holding furnaces. This information uh, you can use to specify instruction on furnaces and uh, refractories. You can use this information to guide you as you learn how, to, uh, how the different melting processes are used. Okay, so let's start with the metal melting. So in most die casting facility, metal is supplied as certified ingot or so. Recycled scrap ingot, in short form you can say RSI, recycled scrap ingot, loose scrap or molten. In the case of solid metal, the charge must be melted down in a furnace. Large die caster employs central breakdown furnace in which written scrap such as gate, sonar and scrap casting is also added to the melt. Converting solid to liquid, if we, uh, we can say energy con uh, conversation, so different amount of energy must be put into the furnace in order to convert the solid metal to a liquid. And here, uh, some latent heat uh, of fusion will happen during this process at the temperature at which the solid convert to uh, liquid. A significant amount of energy must still be put into the metal to make this change. This is called the latent heat of fusion. Approximately one third of the total energy to melt one pound of uh, aluminium is taken up with, the, with this uh, latent heat of uh, fusion. The presence of uh, alloying element like silicon, copper, uh, magnesium only has a small impact on this energy requirement and in principle any differences can reasonably be uh, ignored. So let's uh, uh, talk about the oxidization. Oxidization in aluminium has a tremendous capability to oxide and pick up uh, hydrogen gas. Oxidization result in oxide inclusion and hydrogen absorption can result in casting porosity. In this figure, uh, the oxidization of aluminum melt increase appreciably, particularly as the melt temperature increase. The melt temperature and uh, correspondingly the furnace temperature should be keep as low as possible to avoid undue oxidation and gas pickup. So let's discuss about the furnace uh, what, uh, type which we are using in the melting processes. The first furnace is uh, uh, reverberatory furnaces. Reverberatory furnace refer to a heat transmit into the charge or metal bath through a radiation such as uh, heat uh, rebreathing uh, from the furnace roof and side walls. Rebatory furnace may be either fuel fired like gas or oil or maybe electric. There are several different types of rebatory furnaces. Uh, first is uh, tilting barrel. So this furnace feature fast melting and either brick or castable lining with tilt pouring. Melting efficiency can be high but is dependent on the type of charge. Another rebreathing uh, furnace is stack melter. In this furnace, melt efficiency can be reasonably high from 40 to 60 percent as the flue gases preheat the charge. The melt loss is minimal 
from uh, uh, 0.5 to 3 percent another furnace type we have open wall river the type of furnace is uh, very popular with digaster where large quantity of remelt are required furnaces of this type range from uh, 20,000 pound to more than uh, 1 lakh pound capacity these furnaces are especially uh, available to continuous melting or uh, half batch production pumping and steering are important function to perform to optimize the performance of this kind of furnaces now let's discuss about the electric reverb these furnaces are often used either as melter or as a holding casting furnaces the size is usually limited to 1000 to 4000 pound capacity based on cold charging the melting efficiency is usually quite high from 60 to 70 percent and dross losses in melting are usually about one percent when these furnaces are used for casting the energy required is usually fairly low as the heating system needed only be sufficient to maintain the metal at casting temperature with electric furnace no fuel are required to channel off the combustion gas by a product and the thermal heads are much lower than with a fuel fired river okay so let's discuss about the crucible furnaces the second major type of furnace utilized in the die casting industry today is the crucible furnaces as you can see in images so these furnaces are either heated by natural gas or by electric resistance metal is usually ladled out of these furnace in a direct casting operation or poured in out into a transfer ladle most small size uh, die caster utilize crucible furnace either as a melting furnaces casting furnaces or both great care must be taken care when used as a uh, combination furnace like uh, you are melting and uh, as well as you are doing casting from the same crucible furnace so you need to uh, take care of this uh, process when use a combination melting casting furnace it is important important to utilize the best crucible material and stab stabilize the melt casting uh, temperatures when the temperature of the melt or metal to be cast become too low flooding occurs and cause serious casting problem so now let's discuss about the charging and uh, slugging so charging and sludging a good uh, role of thumb is uh, to never charge a cold in got directly into casting furnace otherwise the cold charge especially in a small pot furnaces can result in a uh, significant temperature drop and cause uh, sludging if a singular furnace uh, must be used for both melting and casting it is strongly advisable to charge only clean metal use an automated continuous ingot charging device this uh, lowers an ingot into melt at only the rate uh, sufficient to maintain a nearly constant temperature and melt level so here we uh, suggest some crucible care uh, points so crucible are usually made from carbon bonded silicon carbide preferred over uh, clay graphite because of clay graphite is a higher thermal conductivity crucible life can be enhanced by avoiding a direct flange in uh, impingement maintaining at least one third heel in the crucible minimizing any thermal shock or cyclic with wide temperature variation silicon carbide is uh, prone to oxidation at a uh, higher temperatures the crucible should be cleaned carefully while hot avoiding any mechanical damage if the crucible chips uh, any such debris should be removed from the melt avoiding eventual entrapment in the casting which would result in a hard spot machining difficulty or even tool breakage okay so now time to discuss the refractory tips so refractory the performance of every furnace depend in part on the quality of the material used to line the inner walls these material are called the refractory molten aluminum alloy are often called universal solvent consequently only the best refractory system can really contain these alloy the most common material used to make a refractory system 
uh, today in aluminum furnaces of all uh, rebri three types uh, is a high alumina brick of or castable with the minimum amount of uh, free silica silica sio2 is a detrimental uh, material in molten aluminum exposure as soon that uh, reaction occurs with time over time aluminum will break down the silica and create a pure silica and aluminum oxide Aluminium oxide is a detrimental to every type of die casting alloy. Silica brick, brick and uh, fire clay and other composite high in a silica content must be avoided. Refractories of this composition can given rise to uh, corundum formation, which is also undesirable. The oolite refractory have uh, excellent volume stability and strength at high temperatures. coupled with resistance to alkalis which is important when using fluxing compound small impurity phases which may be present in less than optimum light composition with process lesser integrity insulating castable or brick is made from various uh, fire clay and uh, you know aluminum silicate material such as molite uh, but with a much higher degree of porosity than a dense castable or hot phase uh, refractory materials the lower density uh, retrieved that uh, the heat transfer when utilizing furnace lining with a an you know, insulating castable care must be taken not to erode or denser uh, hot face away this exposes the backup lining resulting in greater wear and aluminum penetration this causes an accelerated deterioration of entire refractory which is extreme case would lead to liquid metal breakout a very dangerous situation So now let's uh, summarize this video. Mm, when solid metal is used in die casting facility, the charge must be melted in a furnace. Two type of melting furnace are primarily used: uh, rebri three and crucible. There are several type of reverb furnaces. The crucible furnaces may be used as a melting furnace, casting furnace, or both. Refractories are the uh, material used to line the inner walls of the furnace the performance of the furnace depend in part on the quality of the refractory so thank you guys thank you uh, keep following us and keep sharing this video and keep learning till that thank you thank you very much